What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a uh, gun talk. Uh, before we jump into all of that, let me thank everybody who has been watching the videos, who has subscribed to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. Um, some of my co-workers have told me that they've seen some of my videos and that they really like them. A lot of the information that I'm putting out is quite informative. So I'm, I'm always happy to hear stuff like that. Um, I love to hear from you guys out here, you know, those watching on YouTube as well as co-workers and stuff like that. Uh, let me know what you guys think. I, you know, be straight up with you. A lot of the information is from other people that I'm seeing and watching and I'm putting out the same information uh, as those guys. So that way I don't want anybody to think I'm just making up some stuff or not to say that I'm stealing somebody else's techniques and stuff like that. So yes, I do watch other people, uh, a lot of career uh, military guys who have learned these things over their military careers. Maybe they've even taken some of the training that they have learned and kind of turned it into their own style and now they teach it. And whenever I see it, I kind of, you know, hey, I like that. I think I can work with that and I will try to train myself based off of what they're doing and now I'm trying to also pass it forward and share that same information so again thank you everybody who's watching thank you to those who uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already please drop down there hit that subscribe button make sure you click the bell so you get notifications anytime I do videos I do my gun talk videos as well as uh, fishing videos where I talk about my monster bass subscription um, I will do videos on uh, some of the maintenance and stuff that I do on my boat as well as I'm actually out on the water fishing uh, So you make sure that you click that bell click all so that way you get notified anytime I put any of those videos out Also drop down there throw me some comments Tell me what you want to see tell me what you like to see if you have any uh, Comments about anything, please drop it in there. I will try to answer those as quick as possible without you know trying to feel like I'm being attacked. Um, that way we can have a good open dialogue conversation about this stuff. That's the only way we're gonna be able to move forward with certain things. You've gotta be able and willing to sit down and have an open conversation with people to exchange ideas on things. So uh, smash that thumbs up button if you guys like the videos. So, what we're going to do today is I'm out in the shop, as you can see, and I'm going to go over some transition from rifle to pistol. As you guys see right there in the background uh, is my rifle. It is basically the same rifle. I did order a new upper. I now have a EOTech uh, scope on here, or not really scope, so excuse me. It's an EOTech holographic sight. EOTech has been around for several years. Uh, with the military as well as law enforcement. So don't really need to go into all of that. If you don't know who EOTech is, at this point, just stay up under that rock that you've been living under and just, you know, live out the rest of your days. So EOTech on there, uh, my Glock, 9, or Glock 17 pistol, also with the EOTech uh, E-Flex sight on there. I do have my uh, cool fire trainer in here. So, no rounds, everything is safe. And for the rifle, I will be using my Mantis Blackbeard. So everything in here, we're safe. No live rounds or anything like that. So just to point that out for all those, you know, here's a quick little deal for you. So uh, a few months back, I was on Facebook and I saw an advertisement for the Cool Fire Trainer. And I saw a lot of people were commenting saying that, yeah, you know, this is a cool concept. It's a cool device. But for the price of the Cool Fire, uh, cool Fire Trainer system, I can just go out and buy a brand new gun. That's true. You can. And uh, a lot of people were also saying how, well, you know, ammo is not that expensive anymore. So I just rather... You know just go buy the ammo and go out to a, a live range and, and practice you do you boo boo here's my question 
let's say you have a brand new person to shooting. They, they've never shot a gun before. How comfortable are you with taking that brand new shooter out to a range and putting a gun in their hands with live ammo and you don't get hurt or somebody else on the range don't get hurt or even the range itself. They don't end up shooting the walls depending on what kind of range you're at. You know, they don't start shooting the walls and then cause you to get kicked off of that range and banned for, you know, a few months or so. So to that, I say that is where the Mantis Blackbeard for uh, AR-15s as well as the Cool Fire Trainer for pistols. That is where that stuff, you know, really shines. You are able to take a brand new shooter, train them. As you can see, I'm in my shop. It's not that big, but I am able to bring a brand new shooter in here, put the Cool Fire Trainer in my pistol, and at least work on the fundamentals of shooting with them before taking them out to a live range and potentially putting people in danger. So, like I'm saying, um, the closest gun range to me where I live would be the Bitten Gun Club, but you have to be a member. I am not a member of that gun club. So, I don't really have a gun range close by for me to get in any kind of practice uh, shooting my guns. So for me, using the Blackbeard, uh, the Mantis Blackbeard for my rifle and Cool Fire Trainer for my pistol, that is almost the next best thing. I am able to either be out in my backyard, inside my house, or in my shop and can still get in plenty of reps and training uh, with my weapon platforms. All I need for my Cool Fire Trainer is a good supply of CO2 and adequate power supply to charge up my uh, my mantis. So, with that being said, um, I even put in the comment, you know, safety is, is priceless. How much are you willing to pay to be safe? Uh, if my pockets would allow it, I'd pay whatever to be safe. If I'm about to put a rifle in the hands of people, and let's, you know, be honest <laughs> with the way the media portrays the AR-15 that is a big scary gun and is so powerful and oh my goodness it just shreds the body up and okay you have somebody who's brand new to shooting and they want to shoot an AR but they've heard all these scary things from the media you put a, a mantis blackbeard in your rifle put it in the hands of that person and now you can work on their fundamentals without the dangers of the big bad boom that comes out scaring them, you're able to train them in a way to, to where it's not scary for them. They're comfortable. And then you can transition out into a live fire range and they've already worked up that confidence and that ability to handle that weapon. Same thing with the, the pistol. Most people that I've talked to, the main thing that scares them when they're shooting a gun is that recoil. Well. As I've demonstrated with the Cool Fire Trainer on this channel, you're going to get some of that blowback, some of that recoil with your pistol. So now you're used to that recoil, you're used to managing that recoil. So now when you go out onto a live fire range, you already know what to expect and it's not that bad now. So again, Cool Fire Trainer, Mantis Blackbeard, they don't sponsor this channel. I wish they would. I might reach out to them and ask them, who knows? But I paid money for both of these, full price for both of these. Love them to death. So, there you go. Here we go. So, sound like Kevin Hart right there. Uh, here's the thing, Steve. <laughs> okay, no, working on transitioning from my rifle to my pistol. So, when would you do this? This would be that moment when you are in a gun battle. I don't care if you're in a battle with zombies, with aliens, or you're driving down the street somewhere and computers are crashing, it's the end of the world. You pull out your rifle and you're putting rounds down range at potential threats. Anybody that you have deemed to be a threat, you can articulate they are a threat. You're putting rounds down range. Now, 
you run out of ammo in your primary weapon, which is going to be this. You don't want to be out there trying to reload, and I can't do that with this one because of how this is all set up. But you don't want to go click, and as you've got a horde of people coming towards you, you're trying to drop that magazine and reload. You don't want to do that. So what do you do? You want to get this out of the way as quick as possible, but safely. That way you don't injure yourself. And now you want to draw that pistol to put rounds down range. Once you have the time, and it's the appropriate time, you can now reholster that pistol, get back to your rifle, and do that mag exchange, and do what you need to do. Whether it's get back in the fight, get to your family to get them to safety, whatever the case may be. So, here we go. Put a couple rounds down range with the rifle, then I'm gonna transition to the pistol. Should look something like that, of course, with uh, some mag exchanges in there as well. But it should look something about like that. Rifle up, put in rounds, down range. Empty. Safety the weapon. Swing it down. Draw your pistol. Rounds down range. Threats have been eliminated. Pull your pistol in towards you. You want to come to that low compress. Low compress because from this position, if there is another threat that pops out somewhere, you can fire off a round. You can fire off rounds while punching out to get on target. But doing that will keep that enemy pinned down until you can punch out and fully extend. And now you have sights Required, and now you're putting accurate rounds down range. Also, bringing this in here, it keeps it in close. So if somebody does come, say there's you know some kind of cover or barricade or something right here, and you don't know that there's somebody right there on that edge, instead of keeping your gun out here where they can grab it, you got it in close. If somebody does jump out, you can push back, create some distance, put rounds in their area, their direction. But doing this is just another good way of maintaining control of your weapon till you can reach down, grab that rifle, holster your pistol, swing that rifle up, drop your mag out, get a new mag, put it in, round and battery, and now you're back into the fight. So I'm gonna sit out here for a little while, go over a couple of these and uh, just have some fun. You guys enjoy watching me get some training in. Make that sound. And there you have it, folks. We'll do it again. I'm having too much fun. So here we go. Rifle is up. I'm in the fight. Put it round, down range. Weapons dry, safe. Swing it down. Boy pistol. Rounds down range. Scanning, checking. No visual threats. Bring it in. Check your six. No threats behind you. Grab your rifle. Holster your pistol. Do your mag exchange. Get back down range. Scanning for more threats. If there are no threats, now is the time where you can get back behind some cover, get to your family or do whatever. Um, if this was a law enforcement scenario, at this point, you would be checking suspects 
if you did have to put rounds on suspects, you would be checking them, making sure that they are down, securing those suspects. Just because they're down, don't mean that they're out. Secure those suspects. Make sure they don't have weapons. Get handcuffs on them. After you have determined that the scene is safe, then you call in for medical and start handling things from that end. Never ever assume that just because you put rounds on a suspect or a potential threat, that that threat has been completely eliminated. You want to make sure you secure that suspect to make sure that they are no longer a threat. So uh, that's all I've got guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you guys have any questions about uh, cool fire trainer or the uh, the mantis blackbeard um, drop me some comments uh, like I said I am not sponsored by these guys I paid full price for their stuff but I thought it was very very worth uh, spending that money that way I can train here at the house and then I can carry that over uh, whenever I'm out on a range actually shooting I am hoping that uh, that gun club I mentioned earlier I am hoping to join up with them so hopefully uh, someday in the future, I'll be able to get some, some videos of me actually on the range shooting either one of these guns and you know hopefully be able to put out some good stuff as well as uh, be a good ambassador for that gun club. So uh, again, thanks for watching guys. Uh, I really do appreciate you guys watching these videos as well as leaving me comments, uh, smashing that like button. I really do appreciate it. I have so much fun doing this. And uh, I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you guys. I mean, I probably would, but seeing whenever I look at my, my, my stats and I see that I have gained another subscriber, it puts a smile on my face. Like, I look like a little kid years ago who just walked into Toys R Us. If you don't know what Toys R Us is, look it up. I look like a little kid walking into Toys R Us when I see that I have got a new subscriber to my channel. So... To all of you guys who have subscribed, thank you so much. I love you all. God bless you all. And till then, guys, till the next time, be safe out there.